welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. And by the way, if this happens to be the very first time that you are tuning into the broadcast and becoming part of our Bible study together, I say a very special welcome to you. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Isaiah chapter 24. Isaiah 24, if you can, stop what you're doing, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there in Isaiah chapter 24. Why don't you also get something you can jot some notes down with? We try to give a clear outline in each and every one of our broadcasts. Now, as we're going through our time today, I will be encouraging you to get from us a free sample pack out of our English gospel tracks. My announcer is going to be giving you some ways by which you can give us the information that we need to give that sample packet to you to get it to you. So be ready for that. You can use that pen and paper for that as well. I'm going to highlight one of those tracks. The one in my hand right now that I'll be speaking about is entitled Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round. Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round. But right now, let me lead into our study time this way. I hope at your local church they still sing some great hymns of the faith on a regular basis. Now, I frankly, I do like a lot of the choruses that are being written. Some of those choruses have some tremendous doctrinal meat contained in the lyrics. I love them. But one hymn I grew up singing says this, Marvelous message we bring, glorious carol we sing, wonderful words of the King, Jesus is coming again. Another hymn said this, The Savior who loves me and suffered the loss of heavenly glory to die on the cross, the babe of the manger, though born without sin, this Jesus is coming, is coming again. One of the fundamentals of the faith is the second coming of Jesus to earth as King of Kings. Now, you and I may debate some of the other prophetic issues, but we dare not disagree on the physical, visible, personal return of Jesus Christ. The three verses I'm going to read here in a moment from Isaiah 24 focus on Jesus' coming as the conquering and king of the earth. Now, get your Bible, get a notepad, and join me as we rehearse the truth, the wondrous truth of the second coming of Jesus in Isaiah chapter 24. I mentioned that gospel tract a moment ago. Now, friend, listen. A gospel tract is a great, great evangelism tool. It's a way for you and I to extend our personal witnessing even further by giving out a gospel tract to people with whom we may not have the opportunity to verbally tell the gospel. This gospel track entitled Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round confronts the issue that so many people are caught up in that because they think I'm religious, I go to church, I'm a member of a church, I've done some of the church kind of ceremonies that I'm okay for heaven. I cannot tell you how many people think that way. If I just get my baby baptized, my baby will go to heaven. If I just get my parents to go to church, my grandma to go to church, my grandkids to go to church, they go to catechism, they go to Sunday school, whatever, if they go to church, they'll be okay for heaven. Friend, you can go to church from now until the proverbial cows come home, but unless a man, a woman, a youngster is born again, they shall never see the kingdom of heaven. This gospel tract, Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round, confronts the issue that you can be religious, religious and moral, 
but you need Jesus as your Savior, and that doesn't come by being a member. You've got to bow and repent and come to Christ on his terms. Great gospel tool. Riding the religious merry-go-round. Just one of the gospel tracks in that sample packet. Please be ready. When my announcer gives our contact information, you can, by the way, order that sample packet at our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open to Isaiah chapter 24, the last three verses say this, beginning at verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited." Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. Stop there. That's the end of the chapter. Now, my typical approach to our studies here in Isaiah has been to look at one chapter per broadcast. But now and again, I find I need to stop and look at some things in more detail, and that's what I need to do here with these three verses, and really through verse through chapter 24. Now, I have titled Isaiah chapters 24 through 27 this way. I call them the tale of two cities. The cities are really representing two kingdoms. One is the city or kingdom where man is the ruler over all things. That city is called the city of confusion or the city of chaos here in verse 10 of chapter 24. The second city is the city of Jerusalem, but it's the city from which Christ rules as king over the earth. He's going to rule over all things, over the whole earth, not just the area of the promised land. The first 20 verses of Isaiah 24 described the end results of the rule of sinful, prideful man. When chapter 25 begins, we're going to see the description of the glory and the splendor of the rule of Jesus. The three verses here at the end of chapter 24 are the dividing line between the city of man and the city of God. That division comes because Messiah comes. Jesus comes to earth as king over everything and every one. Isaiah already gave us prophecy back in chapter 9 about Jesus' birth. He's going to give us real clear prophecy, hard facts kind of prophecy about Jesus' death when we get to Isaiah chapter 53. Here, though, we see Jesus coming as the ruler of the earth. Let me use three words, all beginning with the letter H, like in the word hotel, to briefly share what we see in these three verses. The three words are these, hurt, hold, and honor. Hurt hold and honor. The word hurt goes with verse 21. Verse 21 is a verse here. It's clear that it is the Lord. It's Jehovah that's going to come. He's going to come. And when he does, he's going to punish people. The word punish here in the verse and the word visited at the end of verse 22 actually translate the same Hebrew word. Often in the scriptures, you're going to read of the day of God's visitation. Here it is that he visits to punish evil doers, those people that are described in the opening 20 verses of chapter 24. Verse 21 specifically says that when he returns, Jesus will punish the angelic hosts, those hosts that are on high, those angelic hosts, the demon hosts that have been promoting sin on the earth, and Jesus will also punish the political leaders of men. But how will he do that? That brings us to my second word based upon verse 22. Verse 21 was the word hurt. Verse 22, it's the word hold. When Jesus comes again, he's going to gather both wicked angels and wicked men and put them in the hold in prison for many days, verse 22 says. When we get over to Revelation chapter 19, almost to the very end of the Bible, Jesus comes to defeat the armies that are gathered at the battle of Armageddon. 
But then in Revelation chapter 20, Jesus puts Satan and Satan's demonic helpers, and he puts the human sinners into a pit called the bottomless pit, and there they stay. Satan will be held for a thousand years. The last part of Revelation chapter 20 describes the great white throne judgment. Now, that takes place after the 1,000-year period where Christ rules and reigns on the earth. Now, listen, Isaiah only saw the time period of many days. We're told that here in chapter 24. But John, the revelator over in the book of the Revelation, tells us how many days, that thousand years, how many days those many days actually are. All right, we've seen the word hurt. We've seen the word hold. We come now to verse 23, and my word is honor, honor. Here, the last verse of Isaiah 24 gives us the big picture, the overarching picture of what Jesus does next. After putting a sinners into a holding pit with the wicked angels, after doing that, Jesus begins a personal on-site rule over the earth. But verse 23 says these words, I'm reading now, then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem. I'll stop there. Now, what Isaiah records here is seen also in Revelation 21, only in Revelation 21 were given more details. After the 1,000-year rule of Jesus on earth, the earth is going to be destroyed, and he makes a new heaven and a new earth. There is no need for a sun. There's no need for a moon in the new heaven and the new earth. The glory and splendor of Jesus will be all the light that the earth can handle. Isaiah 24 may not give us all the level of detail we find later on in Scripture, but it sure does give us these three facts. Jot them down. Number one, Jesus will come again and he will hurt sinners. Does Jesus love sinners? Yes. But when they reject Christ as Savior, Jesus will hurt sinners because they have not repented of their sin. Number two, Jesus will come again and hold in prison sinners. And then number three, the fact is this, Jesus will come again and be honored as the earth's glorious king. We sing it, don't we? Marvelous message we bring, glorious carol we sing, wonderful words of the king, Jesus is coming again. Again, I've got to ask you this, whose kingdom which kingdom are you personally in right now? The kingdom of man, the kingdom of darkness, or the kingdom where Christ rules? Are you a part of the kingdom where you are in charge of your life? Or have you, are you letting Jesus be King of kings and Lord of lords? At salvation, a believer is transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. So tell me, do you and I, are we right now living like Jesus Christ is on the throne of our lives today, this moment. If not, let's repent, put him back on the throne, and conduct our lives like we have the greatest king of all eternity. His name is Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.